welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another glorious episode of the Art School Thugs. This particular episode, guess what? We're going to be showcasing the motherfucking IC crew. My nigga Tex Howard Moten and that dude Sergio Garcia. Happy birthday, Tex. Happy uh, birthday, IC is sir. like a, uh, with a collective of like a few crews in Pleasant Grove and in East Dallas. And around that time period, we like, there's a few elder writers like Ozone and Ross 13. And we kind of formed this like super group of like all of us together. And um, Mashout came up with the name. Remember Mashout? Mashout so, came up with the name? Yeah, so it was a big Mashout. Mashout. Yeah, yeah. So the big meeting and like, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah, yeah. a jewel right there. Yeah, yeah. It was a big meeting and like, yeah, it was like, well, I tried to think of a name and then Mashout was like, how about Infinity Crew? And everybody's like, yeah, that's what's up. What's Dang. Up? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so what, I remember when the Dallas Observer did that feature on y'all. Yeah, yeah. I think that's before, yeah, that was, that was a, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, I think I think Ozone was like the main like, okay. like yeah. yeah. But um but that was, what year was that? Uh that was like uh that had to be damn like 15, 10, 15 years ago. That was ago. like 96, 95 or something like that, 97, something yeah, like that. Like probably like 98. Probably like 98. I know yeah, it was probably after I graduated yeah, yeah. high school. Yeah. yeah. Cause we but, got together like I think in '96. Tex would know he's better with numbers. Yeah. Hey Tex. Tex. When did IC start? '96. '96. So was '96. '96. Yeah, we were all painting before then. Like '93, we started. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Ross was older than that. Ross yeah. was in the 80s. Yeah. How'd you meet? How'd you, how'd you meet? How'd you and Tex meet up? Birthday boy, Tex. That's why we're here for Tex. for Tex's birthday, man. I did, the, the, Time for Tex's birthday. Actually, everybody in IC was being Abyss. So basically, like, I knew Abyss, and he tied, like, so we were doing full color murals, like me, Marka, Vert, and Chosen. And they were just doing black, like, just a can of black, like, burners, characters, and everything. And I remember when I took text and abyss to see what we were doing it was just like oh shit yeah yeah so it so it kind of like switched the whole me and abyss were the ones that tied almost east i was east dallas he was pleasant grove right, and so right. he knew minus and tex and i knew like vert and like oh, man yeah. r.i.p minus dude yeah do so y'all still do like oh wow oh man that's hard yeah it's his, it's his bro- yeah, little bro- yeah man minus one r.i.p minus one that's minus, that's minus, that's minus, yeah, yeah, of course, that is. all of it's minus, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, brothers, they all have this, minus have this tattoo as well, and that, minus had that as well, Joe Skills just walked in the building, hey, man, did you do the Prodigy mural, was you working on that Prodigy mural, who did that Prodigy mural, I felt like, I think like the Davies Brothers. Davies Have you Brothers seen it? Other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who, who did it? It's like the one in New York's gotten dissed like three yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. So that Two was times fucked at up. Least. Yeah, yeah. But, He went to LA, Cal Arts, doing it, get his masters. Oh, that's why he's out there going yeah. to school. He was gonna, he was gonna do. Uh, that was, that was a top pick. But his wife Amy's a doctor, and she got a residency over there, and, and, and a good residency, so they got a place. And, I didn't even know Luke was married. Yeah, I was the best man. Man, and I, I gave, I, I gave up. like, I gave like, uh, dude, when he got married, man, like. I was so fucking nervous to do a speech. I'm real bad at that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like, yeah. 
he got married, right? He got married, right? And like the woman that married him was like really funny and cool. And so we're taking a bus ride to the reception. And he's like, oh yeah, the lady that married us, that's Amy's best friend. I was like, oh shit. So I guess that's the maid of honor because we didn't stand up there, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, she writes speeches for Hillary Clinton. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, this <laughs> bitch is like, she's gonna kill me. You, you have to follow up on like, yeah. that. So I'm yeah. like, dude, I have to go after her. But it ended up being this deal where like Amy's dad went up there, you couldn't hear him, he tried to he tried to make jokes and it was he was kinda like losing everybody, you know, like losing a, a band and people were laughing for sympathy. And then and then the maid of honor went up and it was a whole different girl and she was crying like huh, yeah, huh. you couldn't understand what she was saying. And like I looked at Eon and Eon looked at me, he's like, dude, you're gonna fuck up so bad. And I'm like, oh dude. But I went up there and I did really well. What's that? When did Luke get married? He got married like his dad years? passed. I don't know if you know about his dad passing. It was like a two. Or th it was like it was like four or five months after that. So I made I made it a big deal to have that in my speech. You know, I kind of like I kind of like started off like you know like a lot of times like a these end up being more of a roast than a toast, yeah. you know, and like, but if you know Luke, like, he's probably the nicest dude you'll ever meet, it's kind of hard to, like, roast him, you know what I'm saying, yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. so, that kind of started it and made it easier, yeah. Luke, Luke is Burt, he's an original art school thug, that's yeah, yeah. the name of our podcast, oh, right, yeah, so right. he, he graduated class of 97 with us, you know what I'm saying, so, oh, right. shouts out to motherfucking Burt, Luke oh, yeah. Harden, one of the illest, Introducing nicest the guys, don't his artist, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Victor, we were talking about Marker 27. He, he he graduated from art school, art school thug. You know what I'm saying. So, what high school did you go to? What's that? You went to Woodrow? I went to Skyline, and then I went to Woodrow. I got kicked out of Skyline. So is that where you met Abyss at Skyline? Yes. There it is. So I got kicked out for drawing myself on a cross in art class. Yeah, yeah. Art school thug. Art school thug, son. Just like Tupac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a Skyline too? Okay, okay. That was that was the meeting, yeah. So I met Abyss through Skyline. And, you know, we were doing like acid and like we were mushrooms. We were, yeah. We were in school, like getting still doing mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Man, I did acid the other day. I did that. I did acid the other day. It was great. I did a, I did an acid cleanse. Yeah, yeah. I did an LSD cleanse, bro. Yeah, yeah. I do that. I do that, and I just drink like I can drink like ten gallons of water, That's and crazy. then I'm just like piss, I piss like every ten minutes, and I get whatever out of my system. Get up. Yeah, yeah. I went to Miami this year uh, for Art Basel, yeah. yeah. And, and I met uh, Ryan Eon. He's living in uh, New Orleans now. Eon? It's, yeah. So he's not in Portland? No, in Portland. So when I drove down there, it's halfway there, you know what I'm saying? And like... And like when I was down there, I was like, yo, let me get some shrooms for like, for, for Miami. And this fool brings out like this jar of shrooms. So I'm like, cool, like how many should I get? He's like, no, the jar is yours. You know what I'm talking about? So like we did like shrooms for like three days in a row. Like it was, uh, he's it was been shrooms. He graduated class of 97, art school thug, already, already. Eon, Ryan Shanks, my nigga. But he used to, like, that was the first person I ever saw growing shrooms in his closet. <laughs> I think he, he, he did, I was growing shrooms for a second. I, I grew shrooms. He did the hydroponic at his yeah. house. Luke, 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 Luke was one of like, the first people that told me, like, how to, like, play it off. He's like, I remember when we was in the English class, he's like, dude, all you have yeah. to do is get a sketch pad and a ladder yeah. and find out who the property manager number is on the weekend because that's when it closed. And he would tell me, when the cops pull up on you, just tell them, dude, do you think I'd be doing this if I didn't have permission? And I did that shit, and that shit worked. So, Pegasus ones, the arts people were doing it. We just did full on burners in the middle of the daytime. And we're like, if they come, we're just gonna say, but no one fucked with us. We were like in the middle of downtown in the daytime, dude, just like busting burners. Yeah, yeah. That's what I 
after that, I was in the back of 7-Eleven, and like, Luke's the one that told me, because he's like, just act like you have permission, and if the cops roll up on you, just tell them, and that's what I did. I'm like, dude, I got permission, this is the property manager's my number, call them. For sure. Awesome, like, this, so, so when I was in New York with Chino, like, yeah. Chino, like, Triple OG. When I, when I, yeah, when I first moved, like, he was the only person in New York I knew. Yeah, yeah. Like, he was my weed, he was our weed man when I was, like, 16, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, So I moved to New York, like, I'm 21, I don't know nobody in New York but Chino. Yeah. And Chino... Chime in, chime in. So Chino puts me up, and, 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 and it's, a per, it, 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 it's a perfect time for text, too, because what I'm about to talk about is race and graffiti. Yeah. And, yeah, and so, like, Chino is like, dude, you know why all the fucking... He's like all the most popular graffiti artists. They're not. They're, none of them are really black because black people get fucking harassed if you're like loitering around at night. And he's like, that's why you have, you know, you know, Tino's has has that little brash like OG fucking shit. So he's yeah. like, dude, that's why it's all that's why it's all white boys and Asians and shit like that. Because speaking on the birthday boy right here, Howard just pulled up, man. What's it? What was it like? being the, the, the black guy, the black graffiti artist, you know? Man, it was you cold, know, you know, but I didn't really even think about it like that. We was all but, homies but, but, growing up and stuff like yeah. that, but I mean, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? But I was just yeah. trying to express myself. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because when I came up, man, I was in a culture of, like, uh, skateboard kids, the art kids, and that wasn't even the norm for the, the typical black guy at that point, you know what I mean? So, yeah, like, yeah. especially being in the South, yeah, no, you know but, what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah, but just, like, just on the, just on the whole scale, yeah. he's like, that's why a lot of dope black, yeah. a lot of dope black graffiti artists, they got busted. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of, you know, because... Black you know people can't fucking hang out and loiter, but like, you know, white people or non-white, non-black yeah, no no aren't as suspicious, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And that's coming from Chino. Tensions are high when you see a black like, guy, you yeah. know what I'm saying, in the streets, yeah, especially like, being from a law enforcement standpoint, so yeah, man. it's already a heightened sense of security dealing with that, you know what I mean? But, so. but, but, yo, you 40 now. Yeah. And... The shit's unchanged from, like, you know, doing illegal art, uncontrolled art, you yeah, know what I'm saying, yeah. now to being controlled art and making money off of it. Yeah, yeah. What's that like? It's dope, you know what I'm saying, but, like, in all honesty, it wouldn't be to the point where I could make money off of it if it wasn't for that time period where it was illegal. So, right. like, you know what I'm saying, I, I pay respect and give homage to the days where I came up under the radar, you know what I'm saying, because... Those are sacrifices, yeah, for sure, for sure. But it's a blessing to be able to, like, do it in a point where it's still not pimped out and they're still respecting the culture, but you can make some money off of yeah. it, you know what I mean? So it's like... And you, you, a clothes, you a fashion designer. You're a clothing designer yeah. now. Yeah. It, they, they take it. So, how's... My bad, my bad, my bad. But, yeah, so tell them about how you transitioned into... and. The clothing, the clothing uh, business for fashion. Man, it's like one plus one equals two. I was taking clothing and putting it with graffiti art and ended up with a product that, you know, was re well received in the marketplace. And tell, tell, tell the listeners what's the name of your uh, brand. Uh, it all birthed from a point where we were doing Yums as a footwear company. That transitioned into apparel, which ultimately transitioned into headwear already. And then, uh, you know, we got to the point where people recognized what we were doing and the way we were doing it and the elements that we were uh, infusing into our designs. And we turned into a like a, a, a design and manufacturing firm, you know what I mean? Like, what, like, what did that feel like? Like, okay, so you came from the background of underground graffiti, hip hop, hardcore yeah. culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then, because I remember I had the record store on, we were buying yums to sell them at Cocker Hill in Illinois because we used to have the shop. Man, you know what I'm saying? Like, being saying, a kid growing up how I grew up, it's a blessing to be here. But you I'm know saying, like, you merge so, was like, you remember you remember Tum Tum had his own shoe and all yeah, that shit? Yeah, 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 so that's like, fam. What were, what were you thinking when you were like, 
like like how did that hit you when you was like damn I'm a key element in in giving back to the future like cause you didn't have that shit growing up no doubt no doubt you know what I'm saying like and, and, and you know like the DSR was a little bit more different from the hip hop element you yeah. know so yeah. like how did all that like it's, that shit ever it's just gotta hit be you? grassroots and I'm from Dallas Triple D you know what I mean so ain't nothing else I could do but reach out to the local you know local OGs and it was DSR in Dallas you know what I'm saying it was Tuck so and you Tom, reached out Tom. to them yeah we reached out like oh, yo okay. you know what I'm saying I met, I met Howard, Tex, my nigga Howie T. Already. You know what I'm saying? Through, through, he was a graffiti artist and skateboarding through Abyss yeah. and the homies. Yeah. And then just out the blue, he picked up the mic because we used to rap and you yeah. didn't rap. Yeah. I mean, maybe, yeah. you, maybe you did on the low, but this boy picked up the mic and was a beast. Man. And he was a beast. <laughs> You know, because he always was quiet and the quiet dude, the lightweight introverted. I see photos and he's like, uh, you remember, yeah. like, we, I was, you know, like, I was rapping and then, like, yo, then he started rapping. In the, in the we had. Yeah, me yeah. and Tex got a song together. For sure, we got we a couple We got a song called songs, Regurgitation yeah. of Verbatim. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they, they, they spray painted they those two pieces in my house. It was This dude, he's a renaissance man. He's a renaissance man. He can do rap, all kinds of art. Rap, graffiti, yeah. fashion. In my own regards, being as humble as possible, I feel like if it's artistic, I can, you know, yeah. oh, and, and you I can try anything. I throw the kitchen sink in. you definitely on your Rick Owens. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We so fashion right now, give me, give me, Give me you who your influences are, okay, as far as graffiti artists, skateboarder, and then fashion. Oh, okay. Top three Okay, so for graffiti artists, to. man, like, really, in all honesty, man, we didn't, we didn't have vision of much outside of tech. Texas. So, you know what I'm saying, me and the OGs, Sergio, Ukron, you know what I'm saying, we look to, to the Austin Cats a lot, you know what I'm saying, for guidance because they, they laid the foundation that we could look up to here. On the, on the cool, we were weird. Like, you we, definitely. We never saw even a magazine until we met Ozone. So we were doing graffiti like off the dome for like probably like four or five months and then Ozone introduces the tips. He introduced us to like... Like just like 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 Beat Street and like Beat Street like, was for real. I watched like, Beat Street. It was in the music, you know. Yeah. And like we Back would draw like on book covers and like desks. Yeah, we get on book covers. I oh, the like, book cover yeah. game was crazy, bro. I got so many free cookies at lunch off book covers. I would do like Sergio, but the O would be an eight ball. You know, this kind of crazy jazzy shit like that. And I think from that point, like the way I started, like. Like Marka and like 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 Victor we were talking about earlier, uh, you're called Menace in a, in a, in a like so oh, him, and, him and Bert and Sushai, Sushai, Kung Fu, Kung Fu, they probably started like. I mean, it was like weeks, weeks distance. So like they they were bombing, and then I kind of started, and like I side busted one of their pieces, and like kind of just put up something, you know. And that's like when like Target sold paint. They don't even sell paint anymore. And so I went there, and like so this whole summer, like me and Luke hooked up, and we started racking. We went to, like Albertsons used to sell a paint called Xylonite, and dude, we racked like every Albertsons in Dallas. Like we painted almost every night that summer you know that like we racked almost everyone I remember one time we got hemmed up and it was me and Victor and like Victor like we went upstairs and a security guard hemmed us up cops were on their way and they were like do you have your ID and like Victor was like uh, yeah and asked me do you have your ID I was like no mine's in the car and they were like cool we'll go get your ID I remember I looked at Victor in the eyes and he knew like I wasn't coming back <laughs> right. I knew I wasn't coming back yeah, yeah. I was like cool I'm gonna go that's that easy East Dallas. Uh, like, don't switch me up. And those are the East Dallas kids. So yeah. in the Grove, so, like me so, and the Okay, so up. so that 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 covers the graffiti. So so so, yeah, so yeah. tell me, uh, as far as music, who was your in, in, influences in that? You know, your rap wise. Yeah, rap wise. Man, like. 
you know, we had the foundation of the East Coast because everybody at that point had the foundation of the East Coast. So. But I really looked towards the East, the West Coast, you know what I'm yeah, saying? So that's what we you know bonded. What yeah, yeah. I caught up with, like, the Project Blow movement, you know what I'm saying, which led into, like, the Living Legends movement, you know what I'm saying? So, like, uh, Freestyle Fellowship, AC Alone, Ab Rude, all those kids, you know what I'm saying, led me to, like, Sunspot Jones, you know what I'm saying, uh, PSC. Nigga, you put me on the rifle, man. Oh, L.A. Cool, dog. Like, L.A. Cool, cool was like bars, cool dog. Chopper, dude. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. You had the I remember right I saw method. that dude performing, and he did this thing with his hand that kind of like hit with his like his bars, and it was just crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah. Rifleman shouts out to L.A. Cool. For sure, for sure. And so now you in the fashion game. Yeah, and yeah. You fly. You got the thousand dollar fucking shoes on. <laughs> so, 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 who who you fuck with on the fashion tip, and who who you look up to as far as the fashion icon so that's like a two-tiered response right there it's the people that i acknowledge out there and the people i actually look up to so like the foundation for me is like i go a little bit more avant-garde on my fashion tips so i'm messing with like the rick owens i admire like the raf simmonses you know what i'm saying Please, i'm messing with the Raph. boys that's going a little bit darker with it but you know what i'm saying i'm seeing like you know all of the fashion houses that are established like the margellas you know what i'm uh, saying you, you, like you mess with the, the fendi you know what i'm saying you got I, my, my closet is dumb. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I got the calf fur on there, you know what I'm saying? Peter can holler at me, but I still got the baby cows in my closet. <laughs> Peter can holler at me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got the baby owl fur? The ba baby cows, bro. Okay, uh, you know what I'm saying? I didn't kill them, but I'm spoiling them, though. My you know nigga? What I'm oh, I'm like, that's some next level shit. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing all that, though. The wise old And being owl. from where I'm from, bro, being in Dallas, Texas, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The things that I'm pulling out on the streets, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm out there, you know what I'm saying? I'm really out there because way I out there. way out there, you know what I'm saying? I went to go see, we went to go see Star Wars, the newest one that came out. And Tex was so wilded out on his gear, I could tell people were like, "Is he dressing up like a character that we're fixing to see?" <laughs> oh, he had, he had those boots. <laughs> what what yeah. brand were those boots? Yeah. Uh, it was probably Ricky O. You know what I'm okay. saying? Ricky O. I had. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm saying we out okay, here. Okay, so who do you acknowledge? You like fuck with that hood by You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, the new the new generation, I really appreciate, and I see what like Virgil's doing with like the off white. Off killing it. You know what I'm saying? You know. I see what boys is doing. Uh, you know, like Raph is still ma remaining relevant. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, see, I see it all. You heard about about his situation? Yeah, being a Southern boy, I ain't gonna touch on too deep, but I feel like he might have been uh, yeah, out of line a little bit. What happened? What happened? What did he go on? He had a chick. A little, a little bit aggressive with his yeah, approach. Yeah, okay, okay, so his assistant was banging like a groupie, and he walked in and was like, yo, if you fucking my groupie, you gotta at least give me head. And like, it was all on camera. And all on video, and so yeah, like yeah. he lied, like he he has this brand called V Lone. He's like from the Aesop Mouth. Yo, and he was collabed up with Nike, and yeah, they dropped him behind. And Nike that. just dropped him like last week or two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Like his shoe, he did a shoe with Nike, and the shoes like valued at the like three racks now. The V Lone stuff was lit, bro. He did a, a, a release in Tokyo. You know what I'm saying? I was over there, and I was like, I went around the corner, yeah. and I seen the lines. And I was like, Yo, what is this? A Supreme drop, or what yeah. is this? He's like, It's a v long drop and, and he also what's what's ironic he got in a fight with like Ian Connor who's supposed to be like the king of the youth like he's a big time stylist he styled like he playboy Cardi Kanye had him like as the main dude that's Ian Connor yeah, right? yeah 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 but I'm yeah. saying Bari 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 fucking got into he a fight him with up, him though. Yeah. he pieced him up Bari pieced him spot. up yeah. in the streets of Paris outside Colette which is like one yeah, of the, it was Colette. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. of the like super high end fucking dope stores. Yeah. And uh, he really on the cool kind of snuck him though. He didn't yeah, piece yeah, him but, up but like supposedly off the top. it was because Ian was raping girls, yeah, and then yeah. he gets caught on camera like sexually assaulting the bitch. You know what I'm saying? 
London. Didn't he have issues too with Ian Connor? Oh, uh, Theo, Theo yeah. London, yeah. Yeah. But Theo was on the whole Ian Connor thing and was like kind of like making a stance, in my opinion, for, for, for as far as what I remember, like, yo, that's like not, that's out of lines. I don't really get down like that. Yeah. That's the fam, but I'm going to separate myself a little bit because of the heat he was catching. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Well, one, one beautiful thing we ain't got to worry about. We ain't got to worry about none of that kind of conflict. Yeah, I'm happily married, bro. Man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Tell me this, Tex. Where do you see, where do you see this whole, this in general, the art world, where do you see it going? The, the art world, so like, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a multi-tiered. The visual art right world, there. the visual art world. You know what I'm saying? I like, I like how uh, fashion, I'm going to break it down in tiers. So I like, how, in my personal opinion, I like how fashion is migrated to like a young man's thing. Because, you know, couture and all the runway shows have always been like a more uh, predominant, you know, from an economic standpoint thing. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't something that really reached down to the minority minorities into the you know the, the suburban culture but we've been able to to, to 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 the youth so like I like how fashion is fashion is perceived on the high end has reached down to the lower to the lower uh, aspect of people so that's a beautiful thing to see you know brands and houses that are perceived as you know high esteemed houses being being accessible and being attainable by the, the by the uh, suburban youth you know tell me this do you get a lot of positive feedback from say individuals that are trying to come up in the art world and design world per se yeah. that were like yo we were influenced by Yums you know what I'm saying like we want to thank you for doing what you did because you know that's though you know what I'm saying because I'm still out here trying to get it you know what I'm saying so it, it's, it's, it's humbling to me when I have anybody approach me like yo I appreciate what you did and I was able to build on that because I'm still trying to get it you know what I'm saying so to me it's it's, it's, it's a blessing, you know what I'm saying? I give I give credit to God for being in a position where anybody looks at me as an inspiration. It always changes. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, it always so changes. probably ask Beyonce, she's probably like, I'm not even there yet. You know, so it's like, so probably Tex is way more on it. It doesn't seem like it, right? Because he's thinking like, my next step is even crazier. Say like, say with art is the same way, you know, you think like, people will be like, oh man, you know, you're doing it or whatever, but like, you're always like, no, I'm not even there. I'm not even close. You know? yeah, it's the tip of the iceberg. Right. But so, okay, so both of y'all are doing big things, traveling all over the world because of doing what y'all love. And uh, yo, yeah, I'm going to interrupt that. If y'all ain't seen my boy Sergio moving, bro, y'all need to catch up. That, 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 we are was chopping up with him. But I'm saying, what keeps y'all in Dallas? Y'all could be, like, anywhere. And that y'all This is my home. You know what I'm saying? This, like, this is where it is. This is my roots. And, and I'm not going to put a limitation on that because I see myself experiencing the globe. You know, God created a beautiful planet. Yeah. So I'm not saying I'm going to be here for forever, but this is my heart. Dallas right. is where it all came from. All of the, all of the things that I've seen and been able to apply into my artistic expression is cultivated here. You know what I'm saying? So you text to Texas. Now you go by It's Texas, a Texas right? thing, man. You go by Texas now, right? Yeah, I go big by Texas. Big Texas. You know what I'm saying? And what about you, Serge? Like, what, what, what keeps you staying in Dallas rather than oh, I'm going to go to Cali, I'm going to be in New York? Oh, yeah. What keeps like, you a, art, art used to be like you'd go to New York and show a gallery your slides and like try to get a museum retrospect. But I guess due to social media, like a lot of things have changed, you know. So it's like you don't have to live. You can like live like in Middle Ocean and blow the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? So it's like so the idea of like the cost of living, the idea of connections, the idea of family. I like Dallas because it's like it's a big city, but it's also a small town at the same time. Yeah. And it's not like like even with graffiti, right? So it's not like we're not gang banging here, you know. But you go to major cities. You gotta like watch your back and like there's drama, there's beef, there's a bunch of bullshit that's like totally irrelevant, you know. And here we're all peace and high five, and you know, we're not really about all that shit, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think that like that's what makes Dallas pretty dope, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a small collective.
collective, but I like that. You know, it's like even Deep Ellum now, right? Everybody used to always be like, well, let's go to Austin and 6th Street. But you know, 6th Street's almost more like Bourbon Street. It's kind of whack, you yeah. know? And like, even though Dallas may have more uptown crowd or it's different, it's still like real. It's a good mixture, you know? You got like hip hop kids with like metal kids, with like rock kids, with like uptown yuppies. And it's a good, um, it's a good bridge, you know? I think it's like, it becoming a metropolitan city by the second and I, I, I kind of enjoy it you know but even if it wasn't it's just where my heart is you know I can go to other cities and travel and I'm always like man why don't I move here the weather's great or this is better but after a week or two I'm like yo man I miss Dallas you know and when you see the skyline it's a lot it's like there's a lot more to it and it's not like I'm trying to be like Jay-Z like I got on my shoulders or anything like that but I do feel like I don't know I when people ask me where I'm from I'm pretty hype to say Dallas Right. And I can say I haven't moved, you know what I'm saying? And Dallas, Dallas and Texas resonate around the world. You know, I've been I've, I've had the the pleasure and the blessing of experiencing a lot of places on this planet. And whenever I say, yo, I'm from America, they're like, oh, what part? I'm like, I'm from Texas. Texas has a big mystique about it, you know what yeah, I'm saying? A lot of times they would be like, oh, George Bush. <laughs> Yeah, that's in recent conversation, yeah, yeah, but yeah, even yeah. farther back than that, it's right, like, right. and then you obviously get into conversations like, oh, y'all still ride horses out there? Yeah. Like, nah, but we got horses under the hood, though, you know right. what I'm talking about? Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, so speaking of Dallas, our, just, I, I just want to, I, I just want to, I just want to, I just want to think. Uh, I just want to think of some famous. You know, like how in New York they got, in San Francisco has famous. You know, like Hall of Fame bombing spots, graffiti. That's areas. us, bro. Like we here for Dallas. I know, but like, like Pearl Stone. I remember hanging out oh, with you man, guys at yeah. Pearl Stone. Yeah, Pearl Stone. So I just want y'all to bring off some names of some of y'all's favorite spots or legendary Dallas spots. Yeah. Or new spots. What was the the Hope Street? The Hope Street Wall. American Airlines Center. Yeah, yeah. Paper Love. What did they Pearl call it? Stone. What did they call it? Paper Love. That's okay. where American Airlines is right. That was like where Little Mexico was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It all, it all got, yeah. What's crazy? I was there. I was. They had like a. They had like a Little Mexico thing at the fair like a few years ago, and I was with one of my homegirls, and like it was funny because like in every picture she's like, oh that's my dad, that's my aunt, that's like you know what I'm talking about. It was like this retrospect of like yeah yeah. So that's kind of wild, but that was a good spot, like Pearl Stone. What's up with Pearl Stone? Awesome. What did they do with it? Man, I ain't, Ace, yeah, Ace, Parking Ace Parking Lot was real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pearl Stone is it lost now. Oh, they're making it lost. Yeah, they're yeah, making it lost. It's kind of lofty. Yeah, dude. So yeah, you gotta remember, I was gone for like over over a decade. Yeah. And like you was you doing, migrated you was to the East your, Coast. Yeah you, yeah, you were doing your rap thing. Surf scene was really. Oh, we was pulled up. Activity. We was pulled up down here, man. And now, so much has changed and stuff. Like Deep Ellum was like, like a ghost town. When yeah, I it was dead. Visit. Yeah, it's now dead. now yeah. it's so colorful. It's so like Dallas has always been like a clean city. Like yeah. the walls are clean. Like the trains and all that are clean. But now you can see like. Like, like that Lorenzo Hotel or like yeah. around here you see murals and like really really beautiful art you know what I'm saying yeah and I gotta give a shout out to my girl Leslie Marshall man she's really playing a big part in bringing that that art into a corporate uh, corporate aspect you know what I'm saying and really helping enhance the visuals when do you, when do you think that transition came she was responsible for the 42 mural project that's in Deep Ellum uh -huh. she's done it like it's a second wave of it so like a lot of the murals like she's yeah so when did that come about? Like, 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 maybe getting on the yeah, we're gonna get her on here to talk about it too. When did that because come about? I really, like, when, I really give her credit. When did Deep Ellum come back alive and thriving, and then like, you well, you know, anything, anything in that aspect, you know, what I'm saying, especially when it comes to like real estate and cultural areas and icons, even if they go through a period, in my opinion, where they die out, there's always rebirth, you know, and rebirth comes with a new generation, you know, what I'm saying. But the part about it that makes it interesting to me as a person is like 
the way you tie in the culture that we built down here through through the art form and making that accessible to a new crowd. And like I say, Leslie played a big part in bringing that to the forefront down here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna let her speak on that a little bit. So Leslie. What's up? Hey, so 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 you deal with what 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 so street art. Yes. These are these guys are okay, okay. Okay, so. so I have to say I'm like new school to the old school here, okay? I'm that girl that came to the hood and no one knows who I am. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, What's but, your um, name? What's your name? Let oh, the people know okay. what your name is. My name's Leslie Marshall. Hi. I grew up in the area. I'm from Grapevine, but I've been in Dallas uh, for the last, like, 13 years. I'm getting old. How, how did Texas you, still 28, how did you though. It's his birthday. Connect with these guys. Okay, so um, I actually started a business about 10 years ago. I do art consultation, design, art, and things like that for... I don't know, hotels and businesses, everything. So I I, uh, I kind of do a little bit of everything. I dabble in a little bit of everything, whatever. So uh, I met Tex and Sergio a few years ago. I actually got um, hired to curate a facility. Uh, it's a corporate headquarters here in Dallas. They went and saw Facebook in California, and there was artists at Facebook, like, doing graffiti on the walls while everyone was working. Like, they saw these artists create in like a really sterile like corporate environment so they came back and asked me to create a program to do that here in Dallas to utilize artists in a corporate environment so I've actually worked with Tex and Sergio they came into my uh, program it's like a super sterile mortgage company which sounds really boring but they're actually super cool and um, they came in and created graffiti on the walls so when you go through the facility you see Texas work like graffiti murals throughout the facility Facility. Sergio did some sculptures, so um, we met through that, and um, I've been a huge support in the neighborhood of utilizing. I know I do I do installation art. So Facebook, I actually did a huge installation for Facebook. They hired me um, to do their lobby here, their um, new headquarters in Fort Worth. So they have a million square foot. Yeah, so they um, opened a million square foot facility data center in Fort Worth, and Facebook contacted me from Cali, and I did a giant mixed media installation in their lobby it's like a sculpture and like yeah it's my work so I I run a business and I do design like I love collaborating with other artists and bringing them in on my projects and then sometimes I get hired to do my own work so it's kind of become like this weird like mix but my biggest thing is locally is as much as I can tying in local artists to what's happening and a really big thing that's been happening lately is uh, um, the growth that's happened in Dallas and Deep Ellum. Like, I got brought in to curate some of the big, like, new growth development here, like the high rises and stuff. Yeah. And they've hired me to curate those facilities, but use all local artists. So, I'm actually using all local artists in the new high rises in Deep Ellum so that they're supporting local art. So, that's what's, my. What's, what's that's really my, dope uh, about what Leslie does is artists don't have the best reputation for being smart in the business world and really promoting themselves. And, and she's real humble when she says it, but what she does is, is see the talent in people and put them in positions where they can be introduced into a corporate world. You know what I'm saying? So she really, I give her a lot of credit for what she does in standing up for the artists and bring their talents to the forefront. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, I, I totally respect her for being humble, but the way she's been able to like take this collective and this group of artists and consolidate all of this talent and make it into something that she can present to people that can uh, generate revenue is amazing. Thank you, Tex. So, but what, like, with the Dallas art scene, like, is it like, it seems like it's super communal, like, everybody knows each other, but... How do you, is, is that how y'all see it, or is it competitive, yeah, or is I it think, more communal and people trying to, because I, I met think, your boy, uh, uh, B. Adams, yeah. and he showed me some collaborative stuff y'all did together, and I don't know if it's just y'all, because y'all are, you know, I see y'all family, and we, 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 we're bonded on some spiritual Jedi shit, <laughs> but is it like, is it like, is it like that with all these other, like, young and up and coming artists are they like is it more like communal or is it beefs 
Listen, crew. Here, here. If I can interject, it's communal because of people like Leslie. You know what I'm saying? Because I think art is like a, a survival of the fittest in a sense, especially when you're in a region like Dallas, Texas, which isn't acknowledged for that. You typically look to the coast, the east coast, the west coast for that type of stuff. So I think when you see people who are gaining, gaining traction in, in, in local areas like Dallas, um, everybody kind of sticks their chest out. You know what I'm saying? So the fact of somebody stepping in like a Leslie Marshall and, and organizing it all and letting everybody rise at the same time and then providing opportunities for everybody is what strengthens the culture. Based on everything that's been taking place, all the the wonderful positive things that you you have definitely been like helping to spearhead, incorporating these geniuses. So basically, you're like a maverick, you know. No pun intended, but yeah. Anyway. As an individual that's helping to try and spearhead this, do you think that there's a degree of, like, is there angst? Being that there's kind of like, being that we live in a kind of city that's kind of comes from more of a conservative background, has there, have they been receptive to the new art, to this new wave, to these new ideas, or has it been, have you faced a certain degree of backlash? So I think there's, like, actual angst from, like, the old school artists. Like, I think the angst comes from, like, the creative that was here before it became corporate, like there was kind of this like real free, like the crew is like old school, like I appreciate it so much, you know. I think there's there's this feeling of, and, and I juggle this all the time as an artist and a businesswoman, like I juggle this every day as a creative and like running a company and supporting artists, like there's so much change happening in Dallas right now and in the different neighborhoods where like the art has been and like new things are coming in and there's all this change happening but I, I, I have a platform where it's like so much greatness is happening in Dallas and the money's here and the growth is here and the economy's amazing and they are supporting the arts and it's a huge wave for all the artists here right now like all the artists I talk to they're busy they have projects going on and they're getting paid for what they do you know back in the day it was like you go to the neighborhood you tag a wall up you don't get caught but your work is being showcased and you kind of like show it off that way and right now there's this huge wave here in Dallas of like corporate seeing the like cool factor of street graffiti and no we're not New York or LA yet I understand but it's being utilized in this sense of like creating a coolness in these corporate places and they're utilizing funds to support the arts and the local arts and and it's part of my business of where I work with a lot of corporate places and and I sell that idea of like you're a better business for supporting your local artists you create a cool environment you create a platform for artists that are here to create on this bigger scale in an environment that's not the norm you know it's like I have programs where these artists go in and work in a really sterile environment you know but it creates this cool environment to where it to life. in turn it's like a win-win for everybody the artist gets paid they're getting to create the company looks cool their employees want to stay it's like a full circle benefit for everybody so I think right now Dallas is really seeing a huge movement in that realm they've seen it happening and all over East Coast West Coast and they're they're starting to tap in and the economy is good here everyone's moving here you know, all the corporate, they're moving here and they want to be the cool factor. So about, I try and tap in on that. What about the city? Like the city of Dallas? So like another thing with Leslie, uh, she did like, you mentioned the 42 murals project. So like with me, like when it comes to like murals and graffiti and when it comes to like art in the city, I think that it adds energy. Like, so let's say, let's say like if I told you to like walk through, new, you know, like, like say like back when Dallas was dead, right? Let's say when Dallas was a ghost town. If I told you to walk from here to like the Belmont Hotel, 
it'd be pretty dreadful. It would right. be kind of even no matter how the weather was, it'd be kind of sucky. You know what I'm talking about? How but you can go, you can to go see. to New York, right? You can go to New York and walk all day fucking long till your legs are cashed out and you still have energy, right? So it's like the idea of like murals, the idea of graffiti, the idea it like it feeds off the energy and the people feed off of it, and so it becomes this interactive life. But you know, have you all noticed, has, this, has the city of Dallas, like the DPD and stuff, have they been receptive to all uh, the street art? Like, cause I, they, used yeah. to, they used to be hardcore, anti. Yeah, like there's so we many younger. levels of it. You know, you have people from the contemporary, like cur curating stuff, like in Trinity Groves, so they have like Shepherd Ferry come out, and they'll have like, you know, uh, like, you know, so it's like you have different levels of like, of it all. And I think Dallas is kind of like, not super like late on it or anything, Thing, but I think it's just like the timing is right, you know, so it's like what's cool about yeah, being from Dallas, Texas though, you know what I'm like saying, that. a place where that wasn't really appreciated, is I have seen the growth in that in that area, like I've had cops that would have normally put up on me, like yo, where's your permit and stuff like that, to like, yo, can I take a picture while you're creating this so it is being received and it's being embraced, you know what I'm saying and that is really cool because we come from a place that isn't on the forefront of artistic right, expression, right. you know what I mean, so mm -hmm. For, for for our police departments to see that and not instantly think that we're doing something wrong, but we're doing something good to enhance the perception of our city, that's a blessing. Still got toys out there because I've been seeing some toys and I just, and it just seemed like vandalism. And I hate to be that guy, but I I I, I saw like the local news and they were like showing like oh taggers and it's just like you know people just do their little throw ups and like not really much skill but the cream always gonna rise to the top though you know what I'm saying <laughs> I think I think like when it comes to like like art in general, like it's so organic. You don't really have a choice of like what people will respond to. It's like say like if Austin has like a keep Austin weird or like you know or like you have like in LA these wings that people stand in front of like texted like these deep L and block log letters and like pretty much everybody and their dog takes photos in front of it or like you know what I'm saying like one, like one of the last productions we did, I did like an ET and like a lot of people took photos in front of it. He did a text to the future. But like what I'm trying to say is so like in general like with the art it doesn't matter what you do it's how you do it so it's like you know like we talk about the response with Dallas you know it's really just like people interacting with the work and like really liking it you know some of the other stuff just decoration filler but some stuff people fill it enough to shoot a music video in front of or put their car in front of it or you know what I'm talking about yeah, I yeah. think it's so dope because yeah. and we discussed this like on, on some of the previous podcasts where you know you look at it from a standpoint of like the music scene yeah you know the music scene here in Dallas was never really there was never really like really a true cultivation yeah, yeah. that was financially backed per se you know what I mean you never really had anybody that was like oh yeah I believe in what you guys are doing with that rap stuff so now to know that now in this new day that you guys literally have like there are there are resources you know financial institutions that are like yo we like what the fuck you guys do and like yo we want to put money behind this you know what I'm saying like that in itself the music is aspect this. for Dallas has always been kind of tough because there's yeah. definitely a, 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 a reservoir of talent that's always been here exactly. whether it's subterranean or mainstream the music production wasn't there I but think if the, Dallas had like more production that was key to like if we had producers that were like legendary like I feel like a lot of the homies would have like really made a huge yeah, you know especially yeah. you guys you know like in that respect like, I feel we fall yeah. victim to the fact that the spotlight for music and the type of music that comes from a street level has never really been per se on Texas even though it's an east coast west coast thing in most situations and it definitely had a movement where it went through the south the South was conceived or, or, or envisioned as more of Atlanta, and Atlanta was able to capitalize on it. And I don't know what that, what the, the thought process behind that, but Texas, outside of Houston, Dallas, and stuff like that, was never able to capitalize on that. You know what I'm saying? And build cre uh, careers. I remember one time, I remember one time, like it was AC, AC, one of AC's verses from the Constructor Cons, and like he wasn't there. He like he was sick or something. You couldn't be at the show. And I remember the audience knew your verse, you know what I'm talking about? Which was like wow. very rare for Dallas, you know what I'm talking about? 
So it's like the like like especially you you guys and like uh, like Alaric, like uh, even like like Mega Man. You know, there's some people. Don't get me wrong. They're even my close homie. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say names or call <laughs> anybody out. But it sounded too much like somebody else or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? But yeah. like I feel like there was some uniqueness to where if there was production that was strong enough, it would have pushed you guys to different avenues. You know what I'm saying? But I felt like the production was kind of there, like NPC, like level two or three. You know, I'm not trying to trip, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, I felt like if there was someone that was as passionate enough about tr really, really, really working and grinding, it would have pushed you guys. Because I felt like most music was like, I'm going to write in a studio, I'm going to freestyle it right now, let's see how it comes out. And it was like very, not elementary, but it was very initial, but there was some magic I could see, you know what I'm talking right. about? Right. Well, I mean, but, I just yeah, think yeah. it's dope that, you know, if the yeah. art scene itself, yeah. though, is like, like I said, it's, it's a totally different... It's almost like it's perceived differently from those who are in like higher places that have the, the finances to yeah. to help push it to different platforms. Um, whereas with the hip hop, it just it never really happened. People always, if they were really dope rappers from from this region or dope musicians, yeah. they had to leave the area. Now you guys literally have something that's being cultivated here within the city. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Which is rare as fuck because it never worked out that way for for the artists. You yeah, know the I mean? hard the, part with the art artists, in general. The hard, I think the hard part with art in general is like to find something unique you know it's hard because some groups will come out of Dallas and they'll like you know like newer ones and they'll be like yeah they're good but the guy sounds like outcast or like they're good but this guy sounds like he's from LA or you know or like too much like somebody from LA to where it was hard to like um be unique, but when you know it, you know it. So it's like I don't know. I gotta give a shout out. I gotta give a shout out to you and your brother. Y'all threw some event. I was probably like 17, 18. Yeah. It was something, and it was probably one of my first solo shows. Just oh, me Lord. by myself doing my song, and yeah, all the all y'all motherfuckers knew all the lyrics to my song. I think the song was like it was called "Ain't Shit to Do in Dallas." I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you guys, like I would like it fucked me up. Cause I, like I put yeah. I, I put the the, the the mic crowd and they they literally knew my lyrics, yo. Yeah, I remember what. The, I, didn't, I didn't have shit out on tape and shit like that. There was none of that. But like to me, like I can never ever be whack, bitch. Even if I faked it, it was yeah. probably one of the what? baddest. Not even like I mean, raking with Nas. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Like it was like a lyric that I was like, man, yeah. that's. Crazy. Crazy. I appreciate that's crazy. It. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I can yeah. never ever be whacked yeah. even Put if I try. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's why it was real cool because we used to always support. Yeah. Support. I see because for sure, for Victor, sure. Luke, and then and then, and then when text. Yeah. No, no, we had IE already, but then yeah. IE and IC came together. The ill text, elements. Yeah, Tech yeah. started rapping, and like yeah. I said, like we started doing songs with Tex, and then they formed the crew, the Constructicons, you know, where Abyss was producing, Alaric jumped down, I was on a couple of tracks with the Man, group. I really felt like that, that group, you know, you guys could have like easily like... You know, toured with a few people, you know, and like really caught on because I felt like there was something that was different. I felt it was something that was very different. It was really unique, you know, like Mega Man was really dope. Yeah. Some, uh, yeah. You good? You want to say something to that? I'll start wrapping it up a little bit, but I mean, this has been a great ass interview. I mean, it's. I really appreciate that you even took the time out, you know what oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. to even speak with us because. Y'all aren't able to do this for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know you, you guys still have a certain uh, degree of, like, you know, elusivity. You know what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. are y'all are businessmen who are kind of out in the forefront, but at the same time, y'all don't fuck with everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's how Texas. is. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate the fact that y'all took the time out. Yeah. But um, where are you going from here? I mean, as far as, like, the future, what does the future hold, man? What are, what are your future I don't know, plans? Man, that's real crazy. What you trying to do, man? 
Like, it's a weird deal. I'm in a weird uh, transitional phase where, like, I'm doing three different things where, like, I'm doing art that's, like, what people I feel, like, want, you know? I'm, feel, I'm doing art that, like, uh, with no expectations, and I'm doing art that's, like, museum ready at all at the same time. So I'm trying to find this balance of doing all three of them. I had, like, the, the National Sculpture Center wanted to do a studio visit with me. And like it was before Miami last year and I kind of told him I didn't want to do it and then I ran the question of like why am I not ready for that you know what I'm saying so it's like so now I'm gearing towards that and there's been a high demand on what I do already so I'm kind of like trying to balance it you know what I'm saying What's up? I guess when I was in New York right when I left you were doing like airbrush yeah, yeah. like motorcycles and stuff like that I still like combine that. it yeah yeah so you still you still do that yeah yeah I do a lot of Did airbrushing you have a shop or what yeah yeah I have a shop in Mesquite I have a studio in Deep Ellum and so yeah a lot of tattoos I do on my sculptures are airbrushing uh, sometimes the hands are automotive painted the tricycles are automotive so it's kind of like a, everything kind of went together to kind of get where I was at speaking of production I just did a piece for Mike Dean the producer oh Mike my Dean God. yeah yeah what'd you do it's a MWA uh, with a Swisher blunt in it and it has like a Swisher uh, ash thing is it sculpture it. yeah it's in a studio so it's a, the MWA uh, what's that he wants uh, to know your Instagram. Uh, Sergio so, Garcia underscore Sergio Garcia underscore. Yeah, yeah. Underscore Sergio. And Mike underscore. Dean's probably my favorite producer in hip hop. He's probably like the baddest. And yeah. he's a Texas guy. Yeah, yeah. He's amazing. Yeah, they, yeah. Have you heard that Two Chains new album? Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. he killed it. He killed it. Pretty but, much every Kanye record too. It's yeah, just like yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. people. I'm, yeah, he's a legend. But uh, man, thanks for inviting us. Yeah, yeah, for sure, out, for sure, for you know, sure. Thank and, you guys for and, doing and, it. And bringing the cake from Black yeah. Forest for Howard, man, for Tex, dude. Yeah, yeah, just Reagan. That's some, that's some true, that's some, that's some true. Yeah, yeah. That's some true homie love shit, man, like brothers, yeah. man. So, already, uh, already, already. What's up, homie? Yeah, so. We so, can do it again soon. We can do it again soon. Yeah, for man. Sure, for sure. So I just want to, you know, I just want to thank you and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, check for Sergio Garcia, and uh, Already. I guess we're signing off. Anything you want to say? Anything sure, to yeah. peep? Okay, cool. Bert and Ryan are coming next week. You guys need to get them. You guys need to get them. Okay, yeah. for sure. Hey, grab, grab, grab a text. Text. Howard. Birthday boy, he's he, he's he's giving all his uh, hug goodbyes. He had like 40 people up in here. Oh, get showing love to Howard. And now it's winded down. What time is it? How long have we been here? What's up, baby? Hey, Howard, birthday boy, man. We wrapping this up. We want you to sign off. Anything you want to say, any shout out, you know, anything you want to share with the people. I know you're a man of God and then you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very big, 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 big part of your life, your spirituality. And uh, so, yeah, any encouraging words for people or anything you just want to share? You know, it's your birthday. You made it to 40. It's a blessing. Man, so. I made it to 40. It's a blessing, bro. You know, really, in all honesty, it was times being where we came from and how we was living when we was younger that this wasn't something that was in our periphery. You know what I'm saying? So so to be to 40, you know what I'm saying, and to be at a point where, uh, you know, my parents have gone on to be with the, be with the Lord, to be able to still be here and, and and providing for my family, it's a blessing, you know what I'm saying? So I say to anybody out there that's got, that's got a vision or inspiring to be anything bigger than what they are now, you know what I'm saying? If you just follow the, the, the code, you know, keep God first, always stay true to yourself and to your art, man, it's amazing where God will take you, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, and one last thing. If people want to see any of your artwork or follow you on any social media platforms how do they do that man i'm uh already designed.com is the website already designed on instagram you can follow us my personal thing is text Moden. you know what i'm saying and we out here how do you spell already
already designed. Do we spell it Texas style, A-W, or you spell it correct? We spell it traditional, man. We got it copyrighted and registered as a traditional, man. Already but, you know what I'm saying, the Texas roots is always there. And t at Tex Moten. At Tex Moten. On IG. Yes, sir. You be tweeting? Or is that I don't over? be tweeting, bro. You know okay. what I'm saying? I'm behind the curve on that. I lost, lost, lost yeah. grip with that uh, Twitter. That, that, but I'm on the gram. Okay. Thank you, man, and happy birthday, dog. Yeah, God bless y'all, man. All appreciate y'all right, tuning man. in. Yo, man, appreciate AC, D. Hall, Frank, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing but love, baby. Art School Thug shit. Oh, Art School Thug. Till infinity. Yeah. Infinity, 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 infinity. Infinity, all for one. <laughs> As an individual that's helping to try and spearhead this, do you think that there's a degree of, like, is there angst? Being that there's kind of like, being that we live in a kind of city that's kind of comes from more of a conservative background, has there, have they been receptive to the new art, to this new wave, to these new ideas, or has it been, have you faced a certain degree of backlash? So I think there's like actual angst from like the old school artists, like, I think the angst comes from like, the creative that was here before it became corporate, like there was kind of this like real free, like the crew is like old school, like I appreciate it so much, you know. I think there's there's this feeling of and and I juggle this all the time as an artist and a businesswoman. Like I juggle this every day as a creative and like running a company and supporting artists, like there's so much change happening in Dallas right now and in the different neighborhoods where like the art has been and like new things are coming in and there's all this change happening. But I, I, I have a platform where it's like so much greatness is happening in Dallas and the money's here and the growth is here and the economy's amazing and they are supporting the arts and it's a huge wave for all the artists here right now. Like all the artists I talk to, they're busy, they have projects going on and they're getting paid for what they do you know back in the day it was like you go to the neighborhood you tag a wall up you don't get caught but your work is being showcased and you kind of like show it off that way and right now there's this huge wave here in Dallas of like corporate seeing the like cool factor of street graffiti and no we're not New York or LA yet I understand but it's being utilized in this sense of like creating a coolness in these corporate places and they're utilizing funds to support the arts and the local arts and and it's part of my business of where I work with a lot of corporate places and and I sell that idea of like you're a better business for supporting your local artists you create a cool environment you create a platform for artists that are here to create on this bigger scale in an environment that's not the norm you know it's like I have programs where these artists go in and work in a really sterile environment you know but it creates this cool environment to where yeah, it brings it to life. in turn it's like a win-win for everybody the artist gets paid they're getting to create the company looks cool their employees want to stay it's like a full circle benefit for everybody so I think right now Dallas is really seeing a huge movement in that realm they've seen it happening and all over East Coast West Coast and they're they're starting to tap in and the economy is good here everyone's moving here you know, all the corporate, they're moving here and they want to be the cool factor. So what about, I try and tap in on that. What about the city? Like the city of Dallas? So like another thing with Leslie, uh, she did like, you mentioned the 42 murals project. So like with me, like when it comes to like murals and graffiti and when it comes to like art and the city, I think that it adds energy. Like, so let's say, let's say like if I told you to like walk through, new, you know, like, like say like back when Dallas was dead, right? Let's say when Dallas was a ghost town. If I told you to walk from here to like the Belmont Hotel, it'd be pretty dreadful. It would right. be kind of, even no matter how the weather was, it'd be kind of sucky. You know what I'm talking about? Now but you, you can go, you can to go speed. to New York, right? You can go to New York and walk all day fucking long till your legs are cashed out and you still have energy, right? So it's like the idea of like murals, the idea of graffiti, the idea, it like, it feeds off the energy and the people feed off of it. And so it becomes this interactive life 
you know, have y'all noticed, has, this, has the city of Dallas, like the DPD and stuff, have they been receptive to all uh, the street art? Like, cause I, they, used yeah. to, they used to be hardcore, anti. Yeah, like, there's so we many younger. levels of it. You know, you have people from the contemporary, like cur curating stuff, like in Trinity Groves, they have, like Shepherd Ferry come out, and they'll have like, you know, uh, like, you know, so it's like you have different levels of like, of it all. And I think Dallas is kind of like, not super like laid on it or anything, but I think it's just like the timing is right, you know? So it's like. What's cool about yeah, being from Dallas, Texas though, you know what I'm like saying, a place where that wasn't really appreciated is I have seen the growth in that, in that area. Like I've had cops that would have normally pulled up on me, like, yo, where's your permit and stuff like that? To like, yo, can I take a picture while you're creating this? So it is being received and it's being embraced, you know what I'm saying? And that is really cool because we come from a place that isn't on the forefront of artistic right, expression, right. you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. for, for, for our police departments to see that and not instantly think that we're doing something wrong, but we're doing something good to enhance the perception of our city, that's a blessing. Still got toys out there, because I've been seeing some toys and, I, and it just seemed like vandalism and I hate to be that guy, but I... I, I, I saw like the local news and they were like showing like oh taggers and it's just like you know people just do their little throw ups and like not really well, much skill the, the but the cream always gonna rise to the top though you know what I'm saying <laughs> so yeah yeah He's everywhere though. He got his stuff is up everywhere, but yeah, I don't know. And I'm not. His style is Fayo to me. I think I think like when it comes to like like art in general, like it's so organic. You don't really have a choice of like what people will respond to. It's like say like if Austin has like a keep Austin weird or like you know or like you have like in LA these wings that people stand in front of. Like texted like these deep LM block log letters and like pretty much everybody in their dog takes photos in front of it or like you know what I'm saying like one, like one of the last productions we did I did like an ET and like a lot of people took photos in front of it he did a text to the future but like what I'm trying to say is so like in general like with the art it doesn't matter what you do it's how you do it so it's like you know like we talk about the response with Dallas you know it's really just like people interacting with the work and like really liking it you know some of the other stuff just decoration filler but some stuff people fill it enough to shoot a music video in front of or put their car in front of it or you know what I'm talking about yeah, I yeah. think it's so dope because yeah. and we discussed this like on, on some of the previous podcasts where you know you look at it from a standpoint of like the music scene Yeah. you know the music scene here in Dallas was never really there was never really like really a true cultivation yeah, yeah. that was financially backed per se you know what I mean you never really had anybody that was like oh yeah I believe in what you guys are doing with that rap stuff so now to know that now in this new day that you guys literally have like their there are there are resources, you know, financial institutions that are like, yo, we like what the fuck you guys do, and like, yo, we want to put money behind this. You know what I'm saying? Like that in itself. The music is aspect this. for Dallas has always been kind of tough because there's yeah. definitely a, 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 a reservoir of talent that's always been here, exactly. whether it's subterranean music, or mainstream. The music production wasn't there. I but think if the, Dallas had like more production that was key to like if we had producers that were like legendary like I feel like a lot of the homies would have like really made a huge yeah, you know especially yeah. you guys you know like in that respect like, I feel we fall yeah. victim to the fact that the spotlight for music and the type of music that comes from a street level has never really been per se on Texas even though it's an east coast west coast thing in most situations and it definitely had a movement where it went through the south the South was conceived or, or, or envisioned as more of Atlanta, and Atlanta was able to capitalize on it. And I don't know what that, what the, the thought process behind that, but Texas, outside of Houston, Dallas, and stuff like that, was never able to capitalize on that. You know what I'm saying? And build cre uh, careers. I remember one time, I remember one time, like it was AC, AC, one of AC's verses from the Constructor Cons, and like he wasn't there. He like he was sick or something. You couldn't be at the show. 
And I remember the audience knew your verse, you know what I'm talking about? Which was like wow. very rare for Dallas, you know what I'm talking about? So it's like the, like, like especially you, you guys and like, uh, like Alaric, like even like, like Mega Man, you know, there's some people, don't get me wrong, they're even my close homie, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say names or call anybody out, <laughs> but it sounded too much like somebody else or whatever, you know what I'm talking about? But yeah. like, I feel like there was some uniqueness to where if there was production that was strong enough, it would have pushed you guys to different avenues, you know what I'm saying? But I felt like the production was kind of there, like NPC, like level two or three, you know, I'm not trying to trip, but I'm just saying yeah. like, I felt like if there was someone that was as passionate enough about tr really, really, really working and grinding, it would have pushed you guys. Cause I felt like most music was like, I'm a ride in the studio, I'm a freestyler right now, let's see how it comes out. And it was like very, not elementary, but it was very initial, but there was some magic I could see, you know what I'm talking about? Right. Well, I mean, I just yeah, think yeah. it's dope that, you know, if the yeah. art scene itself, yeah. though, is like, like I said, it's, it's a totally different, it's almost like it's perceived differently from those who are in, like, higher places that have the, the finances to yeah. to help push it to different platforms. Um, whereas with the hip-hop, it just, it never really happened. People always, if they were really dope rappers from, from this region or dope musicians, yeah. they had to leave the area. Now you guys literally have something that's being cultivated here within the city, you know yeah. what I'm saying, which is rare as fuck because it never worked out that way for, for the artists. Yeah, I mean? the for hard the, part the with the art in general, the hard, I think the hard part with the art in general is like to find something unique, you know? It's hard because some groups will come out of Dallas and they'll like, you know, like newer ones and they'll be like, yeah, they're good, but the guy sounds like Outkast. Or like, they're good, but this guy sounds like he's from LA or, or you know, or like too much like somebody from LA to where it was hard to like, um, be unique, but when you know it, you know it. So it's like I don't know. I gotta give a shout out. I gotta give a shout out to you and your brother. Y'all threw some event. I was probably like 17, 18. Yeah. It was something, and it was probably one of my first solo shows, just oh, me Lord. by myself doing my song. And yeah, all the all y'all motherfuckers knew all the lyrics to my song. I think the song was like it was called "Ain't Shit to Do in Dallas." I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and you guys, like I would, like it fucked me up. Cause I, like I put, yeah. I, I put the the, the the mic crowd, and they they literally knew my lyrics, yo. Yeah, I remember what. The, I, I didn't have shit out on tape and shit like that. There was none of that. But like to me, like I can never ever be whack, bitch. Even if I faked it, it was yeah. probably one of the what? baddest. Not even like I mean, raking with Nas. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Like it was like a lyric that I was like, man, yeah. that's crazy. Crazy. I appreciate That's crazy. It. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I can yeah. never ever be whacked, bitch, yeah. even if I try. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. But yeah, that's what it was real cool because we used to always support. Yeah. Support IC because. For sure, for Victor, sure. Luke, and then. And then when checks, yeah, yeah. No, no, we had IE already, but then yeah, yeah. IE and IC came together. The L elements, text, yeah. Tech yeah. started rapping, and like yeah. I said, like we started doing songs with Tex, and then they formed the crew, the Constructicons. You know where Abyss was producing, Alaric jumped down. I was on a couple of tracks with the. Man, I really felt like that that group. You know, you guys could have like easily like you know toured with a few people you know and like really caught on because I felt like there was something that was different I felt like there was something that was very different it was really unique you know like Mega Man was really dope yeah, yeah. you good you want to say something in that thing Blue, what's up? What's up? What, what's yeah. up? They ain't, they ain't got your money. Yeah. What niggas ain't paid their bill? Yeah. All you guys are great. All you guys are great. Yeah. 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 Niggas ain't paid their bill. What's good? Niggas ain't paid their bill. Do we owe? We're good still, right? We're you good. Put the one on me. You put the one on me. Remember? Okay, cool. cool what cool. you say? Cool, cool, cool. Do I owe? I owe any money? So, sir, yeah. yeah. Tell me this, dude. We're gonna start wrapping it up a little bit, but I mean, this has been a great ass interview. I mean, it's. I really appreciate that you even took the time out. You know what oh, I mean yeah. to even speak with us because 
y'all aren't able to do this for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know you, you guys still have a certain uh, degree of like, you know, elusivity. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are, yeah. are businessmen who are kind of out in the forefront, but at the same time, y'all don't fuck with everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's how Texas. is. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate the fact that y'all took the time out. Yeah. But um, where are you going from here? I mean, as far as like the future, what does the future hold, man? What are, what are your future I don't plans? Know, man. That's real crazy. What are you trying to do, man? Like, it's a weird deal. I'm in a weird uh, transitional phase where, like, I'm doing three different things where, like, I'm doing art that's, like, what people I feel, like, want, you know? I'm, feel, I'm doing art that, like, uh, with no expectations, and I'm doing art that's, like, museum ready and all at the same time. So I'm trying to find this balance of doing all three of them. I had, like, the, the National Sculpture Center wanted to do a studio visit with me. And like it was before Miami last year and I kind of told him I didn't want to do it and then I ran the question of like why am I not ready for that you know what I'm saying so it's like so now I'm gearing towards that and there's been a high demand on what I do already so I'm kind of like trying to balance it you know what I'm saying what's up I guess when I was in New York, right when I left, you were doing like airbrush, yeah, yeah. like motorcycles and stuff like that. I still like combine that. it, yeah, yeah. So you still you still do that? Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of Did airbrushing. Do you have a shop or what? Yeah, yeah, I have a shop in Mesquite. I have a studio in Deep Ellum. And so, yeah, a lot of tattoos I do on my sculptures are airbrushing. Uh, sometimes the hands are automotive painted. The tricycles are automotive. So it's kind of like a, everything kind of went together to kind of get where I was at. Speaking of production, I just did a piece for Mike Dean, the producer oh Mike Dean. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. what'd you do? It's a MWA uh, with a Swisher blunt in it, and it has like a Swisher uh, ash thing Is it sculpture? It. Yeah, it's in a studio, so it's a, the MWA. Uh, what's that? He wants uh, to know your Instagram. Uh, Sergio so, Garcia underscore Sergio Garcia underscore. Yeah, yeah. Underscore Sergio. And underscore. Mike Dean's probably my favorite producer in hip hop. Dude. He's probably like the baddest. And yeah. he's a Texas guy. Yeah, yeah. He's amazing. Yeah, they, yeah. Have you heard that Two Chains new album? Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. he killed it. He killed it. Pretty but, much every Kanye record too. It's yeah, just like yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. people. And, yeah, he's a legend. But uh, man. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, yeah, Reaching for sure, out, for sure. You know, Thank and, you guys for and, doing and, it. And bringing the cake from Black yeah. Forest for Howard, man, for Tex, dude. Yeah, yeah, just Reagan. That's some, that's some true, that's some, that's some true. Yeah, yeah. That's some true homie love shit, man, like brothers, yeah. man. So, already, uh, already, already. What's up, homie? Yeah, so, We so, can do it again soon. We can do it again soon. Yeah, for man, sure, for sure. so I just want to, you know, I just want to thank you and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, check for Sergio Garcia, and uh, Already. I guess we're signing off. Anything you want to say? Not Anything sure, to yeah. peep? Okay, cool. Bert and Ryan are coming next week. You guys need to get them. You guys need to get them. Okay, yeah. for sure. Hey, grab, grab, grab a text. Text. Howard. Birthday boy, he's he, he's he's giving all his uh, hug goodbyes. He had like 40 people up in here. Oh, get showing love to Howard. And now it's winded down. What time is it? How long have we been here? What's up, baby? Hey, Howard, birthday boy, man. We wrapping this up. We want you to sign off. Anything you want to say, any shout out, you know, anything you want to share with the people. I know you're a man of God and then, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very big, 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 big part of your life, your spirituality. And uh, so, yeah, any encouraging words for people or anything you just want to share? You know, it's your birthday. You made it to 40. It's a blessing. Man, so. I made it to 40. It's a blessing, bro. You know, really, in all honesty, it was times being where we came from and how we was living when we was younger that this wasn't something that was in our periphery. You know what I'm saying? So so to be the 40, you know what I'm saying, and to be at a point where, uh, you know, my parents have gone on to be with the, with, be with the Lord, 
to be able to still be here and, and, and providing for my family, it's a blessing, you know what I'm saying? So I say to anybody out there that's got, that's got a vision or inspiring to be anything bigger than what they are now, you know what I'm saying? If you just follow the, the, co the code, you know, keep God first, always stay true to yourself and to your art, man, it's amazing where God will take you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, and one last thing. If people want to see any of your artwork or follow you on any social media platforms, how do they do that? Man, I'm uh, alreadydesign.com is the website. Already Design on Instagram. You can follow us. My personal thing is Tex Moden, you know what I'm saying? And we out here. How do you spell Already Design? Do we spell it Texas style, A-W, or you spell it correct? We spell it traditional, man. We got it copyrighted and registered as a traditional, man. Already but, you know what I'm saying? Design. The Texas roots is always there. And t at Tex Moten. At Tex Moten. On IG. Yes, sir. You be tweeting? Or is that I don't over? be tweeting, bro. You know okay. what I'm saying? I'm behind the curve on that. I lost, lost, lost yeah. grip with that uh, Twitter. That, that, but I'm on the gram. Okay. Thank you, man, and happy birthday, dog. Yeah, God bless y'all, man. All appreciate right, y'all tuning man. in. Yo, man, appreciate AC, D. Howe, Frank, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing but love, baby. Art School Thug shit. Oh, I school thug. Till infinity. Yeah. Infinity, 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 infinity. Infinity. All for one.